So here comes the fun part. It's trying to get up this ladder and doing this by yourself. It does help if you have a helping hand, but I want to try to do this by myself because it's do it yourself, right? All right guys, so in this video, we have the Mr. Cool DIY 18K fourth generation air conditioner split unit. Now this does come in a kit. You get your outdoor unit here, and then you get your indoor unit here. This mounts on the wall, this goes on the outside. You do have the option to put it on a concrete slab, or you can mount it on the side of the house. They do have kits for those where you can mount it uh, directly on the side of the house. Now I went with a two foot by four foot by four inches thick concrete slab. I had to do that for code and to get it permitted and everything else. I'll show you how I did that. I know pouring concrete for some people might be a little bit intimidating, but it's actually really simple. Unless you live in Florida and it rains a lot, so you have to cover it up every five minutes. You do have to let that set for 48 hours, and I believe it's seven to 10 days uh, to actually mount something on. So it has been sitting out there for a while, should be cured, everything should be good to go. What I did purchase separately was the garage door installation uh, for the garage doors. And then I did purchase the Mr. Cool line guard. This is the line set cover kit. Just cleans up the outside of the house and then you can paint it to match the color of the outside of the house and just gives it a cleaner look. This does come in a kit and I did purchase these two separately. This is a DIY kit. I've never done one of these before. I'm really looking forward to it. I do a lot of filming in the garage. Obviously when you guys watch these videos, I have to film with the garage doors closed and the fans off just so you guys get the best audio possible. So I'm really looking forward to getting this thing installed. Hopefully you guys learned something along the way. I know I will. Uh, if I do make any mistakes, you guys won't make the same mistakes. But if I do make any mistakes, make sure you leave them down in the comments below. That way I can fix it before it breaks. Other than that guys, let's get this unboxed and installed in the house. All right guys, so in this part of the kit, obviously you get the wall unit. You'll see more of this when we're mounting it onto the wall. So for accessories, minus your outdoor unit and your indoor wall unit, you have your plastic wall sleeve. This is what you're gonna put through your wall once you drill that hole, and then you'll run your line set in through that. You have some instructions with startup guides. You have your drain line with the drain joint and an O-ring or seal. You have two sound dampening pads. You have three non-adhesive UV tapes. You have four rubber feet pads. This is for the outdoor unit when you're mounting that. The ceiling clay or neoprene. This is so you can close the gaps uh, with the wall sleeve. That way you don't have any air leakage. This is your Mr. Cool tool that they provided. You have your air freshening filter. This is gonna go on the wall unit. You have some more mounting hardware. These are the batteries for your Mr. Cool remote. And then you also have a wall mount for your remote. This is the smart USB AC controller. This is so you can run the handler or the air conditioner with your smart app. These are some more sleeves. And then you have your line set. This is the 25 foot refrigerant pipe. Uh, this is the kit that I went with. They do have longer ones or I believe they do have some shorter ones as well. So this is your quick connect line set refrigerant pipe. What I like about these is that they are color coded. So you can't really get this wrong of which one goes into which. So it goes out into the outside unit and the wall unit. They're all color coded with this blue and this gray. So this one comes in the kit. Let's go and get this installed.
good level that way. It's got a nice slope. Um, I did have to adjust it because, you know, I got wires and I have some uh, sprinkler PVC pipes and some other PVC pipes I have no idea. <laughs> Once you start digging in your backyard or in the side of your house, you'll start finding pipes and you have no idea where they go unless you were there when the house was built. So we have our base set. I'll pack this down a little bit more and then I'll go ahead and throw in the concrete. All right, so we're back at it again. Good old Florida rain. So I had to get a, uh, a covering. <laughs> so back at it again. I got one more bag to go. So it looks like seven bags is perfect for a two by four concrete pad. I'll sell my level this out. Get all that excess out. I want to make sure you pat down those corners. It's definitely a milkshake. All that rain that hit me out of nowhere. It was literally sunny and I felt a little sprinkle and then all of a sudden a thunderstorm. I'll smooth all this out. I just want to make sure we get all those cracks, all those crevices. Try to get all those air bubbles out. That rain definitely uh, got me on that one. All right guys, so here's the template for the air handler. This is what's gonna help you mount this bracket onto the wall. So this metal bracket, I'll take it off. We'll mount this on the wall first, and then I'll go ahead and mount the handler onto this bracket. It also has this three and a half inch hole here that's gonna help you guide uh, that line set out through the, the wall, whether you have drywall or concrete walls like I have. So I'll be drilling in through a concrete wall. If you have studs, obviously you wanna get this on as many studs as possible. To bear all this weight so and then this hole here will help you guide this line set out and it's great that they provide you with this so you can get everything right uh, hopefully the first time uh, just make sure you get everything marked out you want to get it level so we'll go ahead and get this bracket off we'll get it mounted on the wall and this wall unit should just snap right on to this bracket all right guys just to get this wall mounting bracket off you have one screw right here and basically you just pull back on this and it pops right off. So we'll get the screw out and get this wall mounting plate off. So this screw, you can just toss it. You're not gonna need it to mount the wall unit to the mounting plate. So here you have your line set with your drain line and then you have your power cord here. So when you're bending this out, you just wanna make sure you're careful that you're not kinking it or possibly breaking it. So just take your time when you're bending this out straight.
So when you have your template up here for your mounting plate, obviously you wanna make sure if you have a concrete wall or if you have studs, just make sure you have enough clearance on the top and the bottom and on the sides. And also if you do have concrete walls like I do or center blocks, you just wanna make sure that you have your wall sleeve and your anchors or whatever you're gonna drill into. Just make sure that you're drilling into one concrete or one uh, center block. That way you're not hitting two or hitting the gaps in between especially for this wall sleeve here that's going to take your line set to the outside you just want to drill in through one center block uh, some center blocks are different you might have a t in here so that might make it a little difficult when you're taking that hole saw through so just make sure you're getting this lined up and you're doing it right the first time here i'm just using a level on the template and then once i put the mounting plate on i'll double check the mounting plate uh, just to make sure that everything is level still here I'm just using a hole punch and then I'll use a marker afterwards to mark my holes. All right, so after using the template, I just wanna make sure that these holes line up with the actual wall plate and that everything is still level. Everything looks good, so that template worked out. So here I'm just using a 530 seconds concrete drill bit to get through the center block. Uh, I had some concrete screws laying around and this is what I'm gonna use to drill some pilot holes and get this mounting plate on. Just make sure you're mounting this mounting plate correctly. You, you can't really put it on backwards because you do have this that sticks out. So just make sure you should be able to read everything on here from left to right. So now that I got the wall plate mounted, I'm gonna drill my three and a half inch hole through the concrete. If you have regular drywall, you can just use a regular hole saw. But here I'm using a concrete spider rapid core eject hole saw, three and a half inch, and I'm using a spider rapid core eject system. So it should be a little faster, but we'll see. This might take a while, so I'm gonna speed through it. So I did hit the side right here, which I didn't want to do. Uh, I should have probably came over a little bit more, but this is what I'm talking about. Uh, just make sure when you're making your measurements, you really don't know where these are at, but this is right at the joint. So I probably could have came to the right a little bit more. So like I said, if you're going through concrete, uh, just make sure if you're going through these cylinder blocks that you have it set to where you can just get the gap. So I did hit the side right here. So I'm gonna have to chip through. Uh, to get to the other side. So that's just one thing you don't want to do, but it's a little extra work, but it's still doable. So I'll go ahead and get through and then get through the other side. And one thing you want to note too, you do want this at an angle. So just make sure when you're coming back through the other side that you're coming down at a slight slope. So I'm going to go ahead and chip through this and get through the other side and then I'll drill through the other side as well. I'm not going to lie, this thing works pretty well. So this uh, spider hole saw is working pretty well, so I'm already liking it. So now I'm gonna do is try to get this drill bit to go through the other side, just to poke through, and then I'll go ahead and finish it off from the other side. So I was able to go all the way through to the other side with this whole setup which is awesome, especially drilling through concrete uh, for most of us that know about having these walls. Uh, sometimes it's a little difficult to get anything to anchor on or anything to drill through. So, and I do have a slight slope, which is good because you want that drain, uh, drain line to be able to drain out. So this looks good. Uh, I didn't have to come in through the other side, which is good. So we got this done. We'll clean this up and we'll put in our sleeve. So for the rapid core eject, 
this just comes out like this and then you can just take it out just like that pretty cool system i like it uh, this is the first time i've tried this hole saw so i'm already a big fan so here's a closer look at the three and a half inch hole uh, we'll go ahead and put the wall sleeve in here but this is what i was talking about as far as hitting the gap and then hitting the side here uh, that hole saw was able to get right through it so i definitely like it and i definitely recommend that hole saw and that rapid eject core system so pretty neat got that slope on there so everything's good to go let's get our wall sleeve in there so on the wall sleeve you do have some markers on here uh, 7 through 21 so when you put this through the wall just mark it on the outside to see where you need to cut it so I'll just take a sharpie I'll put this through the wall I'll take a sharpie and then line it out and then cut it all right so I push the wall sleeve all the way through <laughs> it doesn't seem to reach the other side which is fine so I don't really have to cut anything uh, it's kind of sitting flush right here I'm comfortable with it all it is is just so it protects the line set so it doesn't rub on anything or possibly get damaged just kind of gives it a smooth uh, passage to reach on the outside so it's sitting flush right here so I'm comfortable with it I'm gonna go ahead and wrap my line set with the uh, the knot adhesive a UV protectant tape and then I'll slide the line set through here and then we'll bend it down to uh, put in the rest of the stuff the only problem that I'm running into now is when I run that line set down I do have other stuff on this wall uh, I'm gonna have to relocate some stuff so uh, which is fine it's just more extra work <laughs> it is what it is so I'll go ahead and run that line set through here and we'll get this installed So now I'll take that non-adhesive UV tape and I'll wrap it around the line set, the condensate drain line, and the communication cable. And I'll wrap it into a bundle and I'll just make sure that the drain line is sitting on the bottom. So I'm just gonna take a couple zip ties. I'll zip tie here on the bottom and I'll zip tie here on the top just to keep this together while I'm wrapping the tape. Now if you're using zip ties, you don't wanna tighten it down too tight or you might kink the drain line. So remember, this is a non-adhesive tape. It's just a UV protectant. So once you wrap it on here and you let it go, it's just gonna come loose on you. So all I'm gonna do is take some duct tape and I'm gonna wrap it around the ends so it stays nice and tight. All right, so I can already see the challenge that lies ahead. I'm gonna run the communications cable through the wall sleeve and then I'll run the rest of the line set through and then hopefully get this all lined up and get it to click into place. So let's go. So now I'll run the communications cable through here. Just make sure when you're running this through that you're protecting these and they're not getting damaged on the other side. So I got as much of this cable as I could through here and then we'll just get the rest of the line set through this wall sleeve. So as you can see with this wall sleeve, it is sticking out a little bit. I couldn't get it to go flush. I probably went too far at an angle, which is okay, I still want that drain line to be draining out so uh, we'll see if this interferes with putting the wall unit on if it does then I'll go ahead and adjust and see if I can get this to sit flush so here comes the fun part is trying to get up this ladder and doing this by yourself it does help if you have a helping hand but I'm going to try to do this by myself because it's do it yourself right so I'm going to get this line in first just make sure you're not bending it, not kinking it, not breaking it. Got to get the whole line in there. Get that to slide through first. Right. Get more up on this ladder. So I can get a better angle. Hopefully it just clicks right in like it's supposed to. But we will see. And it clicked in so that wall sleeve sticking out didn't really interfere with pushing this all the way down everything is flush everything is clicked in 
everything's secured. So I'm pretty comfortable with this up here. Uh, we'll go ahead and finish taking all this other stuff off. I'll clean it up. I'll put that, uh, don't forget to put your air freshener filter in there and we'll go ahead and connect the other side. So this Wi-Fi module just clicks in right into place. You just push it right into here. And that's it. Now it looks like there's one missing here but this is where your air freshener filter goes. Uh, you just take this off and you set this in there. Uh, it looks like there's a slot for one here, but I only received one. So I'll contact Mr. Cool to see if I was supposed to receive two of these because I only received one and there's a slot for another one here. So here I have the ceiling clay. I'm gonna use this to fill the gaps. You just wanna make sure no air is escaping or nothing's actually getting in. So all it is, is just a sticky clay. You just want to make sure that you fill that gap. So from here, I'm just going to bend this down. You just want to be careful when you're bending this down. So this neoprene or this ceiling clay, it's not enough. So you definitely want to get some spray foam. So I'm going to get some spray foam and I'm going to get some in there. So I'm going to use some Loctite spray foam just to fill those gaps and cracks. And uh, this should work out great. So. It's definitely gonna fill in those gaps. Make sure no air is escaping and no critters or bugs are getting in. Just be careful, this stuff is really sticky. So just try to keep it away from everything else. Uh, this will expand, so just remember that. So as you can see here, it did expand a little bit. I'm gonna use the other side of the wall sleeve or that pipe sleeve and then go ahead and press this in and get it seated. And then we'll get our outdoor cover uh, line set cover kit. So here we have the box for the line set cover kit. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and see what we got inside. All right guys, sorry for the background noise. Everyone decided to pressure wash their driveways today. So it is what it is. Uh, so in the kit, you do get three of these covers. This is what goes on the outside. So you get one, two, and three. And then this is what goes on the wall itself. I'll use Tapcon screws to get this in to the concrete. They do provide you screws, but it's mainly for drywall. So this is what actually goes on the wall. And then you get three of these. And then you have some connections here. Just be aware when you're opening these up, the screws are inside. Then you have some different uh, union joints and then some elbows and you have some zip ties. It does come with some instructions. So this looks pretty simple to install. So let's get it on there. So before I connect the rest of the line, I'm gonna install the line guard first. I wanna make sure that everything's level and nice and flush. All right guys, so for my first mistake, before you bend these lines down, you wanna get this cover on first because these two screws sit right behind these lines. So with it bent down like this, I won't be able to access these two holes. So all I'm gonna do is make some new ones and I'll go ahead and mount this bottom piece on. So when it's all said and done and I have the line guard installed, I'm using some sealant along the sides just to make sure it has a weather tight seal. So from here, I'm just unrolling the line. Don't unroll it all the way. Some of it, you're gonna tuck it behind the unit. Just unroll what you need that's gonna reach uh, the top of the line set. So from here, I'm gonna connect the rest of the line set you have your drain line and then you have your blue and your gray caps. Those are going to connect together. Obviously you remove the caps and then we'll connect the lines. They didn't provide any tools with this kit. So just use a couple Crescent wrenches, or whatever tools you might have to connect the rest of the lines. So 
So my understanding with this drain joint and seal, it's only used if you're hanging your outdoor unit by a bracket on the wall. All right, so trying to get this bottom one on here is a big pain. Just be careful, you don't wanna break any of these lines because then you're gonna have to wait for a replacement and that's not good. So just take your time. Uh, this bottom one, it's a pain. It was a pain on the top. So this one went right on. This one is taking quite some time and it was the exact same thing on the top. You obviously don't wanna cross thread these. You wanna make sure you get them in nice and straight and just take your time. You don't wanna break any of these connections. So what's great about this Mr. Cool DIY system, these lines already come pre-charged. You just open these valves up all the way. You'll use your Mr. Cool tool that came in the kit. You'll open these up and you'll hear the lines being charged up. And then all you do is just take some soapy water. You'll spray along the connections at the bottom and at the top, just to make sure you don't have any leaks. And then I'll take my brass fitting caps and I'll put these back on. Just follow the instructions on how to hook up the electrical. I already had a professional electrician come and install the box to do a quick disconnect. So all that is already connected, but these are all color coded. It has a one, a two, and a three, and your green is your ground. And if you look on your system, you have a one, two, and a three, and then you have your green screw for your ground. So these are pretty simple to install. I'm not an electrician, so I don't wanna tell you how to hook this up, but just follow the instructions and everything should be good to go. All right, let's do it. The breaker is still off on the inside, but this is a quick disconnect for the outside uh, just to be up to code and for permits. If you can read the on, it's on. 
If you can read the off, that means it's off. So I'm gonna switch it to where I can read the on. All right, so that's connected. Now that I have everything hooked up and the connections are made, and I also turned on the outer quick disconnect, I'm gonna flip the circuit breakers on and see if it works. And we have power. So when I flip the circuit breakers to on, it turned on and then it shut off. Just take your remote, hit the power button, and it comes on. Now the temperature and the Wi-Fi light look like they're blinking, but they're really not. It's just doing that on camera because they're LED lights. Now you can use the remote to run all your settings, or you can use the Mr. Cool smartphone app and run all your settings through there. All right, so the system works, everything is functioning. I don't have any leaks. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up wrapping up the lines with the non-adhesive UV tape. And then also we have that soundproofing pads. I'm gonna put those on the connections at the top. So I wanted to make sure I didn't have any leaks while the system was running as well. So I'll go ahead and finish this up. We'll put on the rest of the line guard and we'll clean it up. So now that I have everything connected and set up, I'm gonna go ahead and anchor this down. I didn't wanna anchor it down just yet. I wanted to make sure that I was able to adjust it if I needed to. So I'm using three inch concrete sleeve anchors. And here I'm just using a Tapcon drill bit. I have a stop. So you can buy a set of these. They come in different sizes. And all they do is slide down the drill bit and then they have a set screw. You just take an Allen key and tighten it down and it keeps it in place. And all these do is just keep you from drilling past a certain point. I'll take a Sharpie, I'll mark my spots, I'll move the unit over some, and then I'll make my holes. So in the back, you do have these slots, so these will slide under the bolts. You'll bolt these down, and then you'll bolt down the front. So don't do what I did. I went too far down with that bolt. So now I can't use these rubber feet because the spacing is too far. So don't make that mistake. So here you can get an idea of the sound on the outside. This system is not loud at all. I was worried about not being able to put those rubber feet on the ground. I was concerned with it rattling, but it's not rattling at all. So don't make the mistake I made and drilling too far down and not being able to use the rubber feet. Just make sure you're making your measurements and take account for the feet on the actual unit. All right guys, so that was the installation of the Mr. Cool DIY fourth generation 18K mini split unit. Uh, as you can see, the system is all DIY. You can definitely do this yourself. And it's very quiet. I'm standing next to the system so you can see how loud it is when I'm trying to talk. 
and on the inside I can barely hear it. So this system is really quiet. I'm really enjoying it. It's already cold inside. So I'm looking forward to getting in there and working in the garage. Other than that guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something. I know I did. Just make sure you don't make those same mistakes that I made and this is why we do these videos. Other than that guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one.